terms of like creating other web show or online shows, um, but I love it because it, it, you know, you sort of made this distinction between TV and online, and I don't, I think that distinction's going away. I don't, I think very soon you will be writing a show. Um, TV was, was uh, con conceived as this idea of the sort of global telecommunications. Well, it's not global and it's not communication. The internet is both those things. It's two directions, it's communication, it goes everywhere. It has the potential to very soon be much bigger than TV. We should really, I think we may have been calling the wrong box TV all these years. This may be the TV um, because, uh, so don't worry that I'm going to be making content that's smaller because I think this content can be bigger. You know, it's also really cool about that. We have, for husbands, we have fans in New Zealand, Japan, Israel, um, Wales. I mean, yeah. and yeah. usually for TV shows, they have to wait a whole other year or two years just to even get it. We have fans right now. In, in yeah, and we, we love that. And so we, would, we wouldn't want to, um, to, to change that. And yeah, I'll, I, I want to keep making internet content because, yeah, it's great. Thank you. Do what we want. <laughs> Hi. Uh, first of all, sorry if that's too loud. Uh, show looks great. Uh, Thank you. But also, um, every time I write or I sit down to write something, one of my biggest concerns is uh, falling into the trap that a lot of people do. I'm not going to say anyone specific, but a lot of people tend to fall into that if you're a white guy from the suburbs, everyone you write, no matter who they are, sounds like a white guy from the suburbs. Right. Uh, so how do you avoid that? Just There's a couple things. One, it, you can embrace it and you can write the greatest white guy in the suburbs thing ever that totally captures the white guy in the suburbs experience in a way that no one ever has. Um, <laughs> Or you can just can realize you can write everything. If you feel like you don't have the exposure that you need, go volunteer at a place with different people and expose yourself to different ways that people talk and live and work. And and you, you know you you don't have to. This, you, you probably will remain white, but you <laughs> <laughs> but you can go gain some proficiency with other kinds of voices. Um, and then you'll have the confidence. You want to be able to write any kind of character. Um, uh, including aliens. You never know where you're going to end up. Uh, I have a question for that, Jane, yeah. in, in addition to the... So, does that not imply that, um, what, that there, there uh, is a, a certain stereotype or a standard, like to say, um, this character sounds like a white guy from the suburbs, you know, uh, I have a friend who's a, a black female and she's a writer and she was doing an interview one time and they said, well, do you write black? <laughs> <laughs> like, so what is it? I, cause I've heard this question before and it just, it confuses me to say like, well, I don't, I don't understand how to write this kind of person. Like, how do I write a Mexican? What's the Mexican experience? I need to hang out with some Mexicans to know how to write a Mexican. Like, shouldn't you just write somebody and as long as their voice is distinctive, whatever qualities they have, like their race or their, their economic class or whatever, couldn't that come as a, uh, you know, I mean, couldn't that just be layered on top of whoever they are on the page? Yeah, absolutely. The, the writing people is just writing people. But I think the, the quality of that layer that goes on top, um, uh, elements of language, experience, um, anything cultural that you're going to want to get right, you sort of, you don't want to guess at, you don't want to have, oh, Dios mio, I've got them late for the day of the dead. You, know, you, will. <laughs> you want to get it right. So you're right, absolutely. The main, the main trick is don't think that there is a trick to it. I've heard people say, like, the problem with how people write women is they just write dudes with boobs. And it's like, honestly, aren't we kind of dudes with boobs? Like, like we're all... We're all people. I, I've never understood this. Like, there's a female character and a male character. If you really know someone, you know people are people. Um, and and the most important things about us are those wonderful, fragile human things, not some sort of imagined femininity. So, absolutely, people at the base just write a person. But. Well, and and don't misunderstand. I, that is what I was getting at. Yeah. I may have not have worded it well. I I apologize. No, I it wasn't anything to... with your question. It okay. just it, to me that because that and that question comes up a lot. I've heard 
heard you get asked that a lot, and I, I have always wondered and never had answered, does that imply that there is like a certain right way to write this kind of a person? Yeah, no, it's not. It wasn't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great question. It was a great question. It was a good question, absolutely. <laughs> Take another one here. Hi, question for Jane. Um, which character or characters have you never written for that you most wish you had or could write for in the future? You won't believe this, but do you know what Buffy character I never wrote a word for? Xander. <laughs> I wrote Xander. Oh, okay. It was a guess. I don't know. <laughs> Faith. I never wrote a word for Faith until the comic books. Um, so I never wrote a word for Eliza to say until Dollhouse. Um, and that just was weird, like her episodes just, you know, she wasn't in every one and mine never lined up with her. So that was a character that I was, I was sad I never got to write for. Um, but other characters I never got to write for include James T. Kirk. <laughs> like, um, uh, you know, just great characters in history. I never got to write for Lizzie Bennet of, of Pride and Prejudice. And so, yeah, there are ones. <laughs> the fact that those two came to mind right away probably tells you those are my two great regrets. <gasps> oh. well, they are doing Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Aren't they doing a movie version of that book? Maybe you can get in on that. <laughs> do Pride and Prejudice and Star Trek. That's the one okay. I clearly want to do. How dare I? I'm sorry. I'm going to try. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Hi. Um, I really loved reading your blog and reading about your experiences and um, your writing process. Is there a book possibly in the works for writers about writing? You are talking about the blog at janeespenson.com, which is now sitting there all dusty and defunct, but everything's still there in the archives. It's totally unorganized. You're going to have to dig around and read through it, but I hear from people all the time that are like, you know, I'm up to March of 2001 or whatever it is, um, like, like reading my way through the archives. And people seem to really love it, and they get a lot of, of good out of it. They get a lot of help out of it. I would love to, when I have a break, um, I would love to have like an unstaffed year and turn that blog into a book, because it would take a lot of work to restructure it. All the examples are out of date. You know, it's all like... Did you, what did you think about last night's, some show that's not around in a million years. Um, so I've got, I've got work to do on it, but I would love to write a how to write guide. I think it could be really good. Apparently they, they, they don't sell very well, but they sell forever. So that sounds cool. <laughs> Thanks. One more over here. I was wondering, um, on Buffy and Angel, you would see this a lot where the episode was written and directed by the same person. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could talk a bit about the writer-director role, if that creates any sort of conflict of interest or brings anything new to the game than having those roles separate. Uh, it doesn't create a conflict because it actually eliminates the conflict because it would be a pretty nutty director who would say, I can't shoot this, the writing's terrible when they wrote it. So, um, it, it actually tends to very much streamline the process and it's exactly the kind of thing I would love to do except I hate directing. Um, so I would hate to do it. Um, I'm, I think of myself as a very auditory writer. Like I, I sometimes think if there's a... F I'm, there's many flaws in my writing. One of them is that I sometimes forget I'm not writing a radio play. Um, and I'm just, I'm hearing the voices. I can't even write with music on because it drowns out the voices. Like, I'm really hearing it. I'm sure if you did one of those CAT scans, it would, like, the things that would be firing would all be in the auditory part of the brain. I'm listening to the voices. Um, and, and that means that I'm not always seeing the pictures. So I think I'd be pretty lost if you put me behind the camera and said, okay, we're, we're seeing this from here, 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 here. Directors do this. Um, I wouldn't know. Um, but I think it's really great when a writer knows how to direct. Uh, Jeff Greenstein, who directed Husbands, is a longtime writer. He wrote for uh, Will and Grace and Desperate Housewives and Friends, and he's fantastic. And just sort of instinctively have a, has a sense for where the cameras go that I mystifying, mystifying. I, even when I find, watch a cut, I won't notice when we've cut from one angle to another because I'm just listening. Hmm. So, but it's a, it's a great process and it, it works for a lot of people. 
All right, we'll take one more over here and then I'll have a final question for our moderator, for our panel today. Hi, this question is for Jane. Um, you've written such a plethora of fantastic, strong women characters, both like within the Dragon Com world, but also realistic women. Do you have a favorite scene or episode that you've written where you've gotten to play in someone else's sandbox and really delve into the character and show them in a new way? Into the female characters? So you would say there is a plethora? Uh, <laughs> use that. Um, characters with strong, well, you know, do you know about the Bechdel test? It's, oh, it's amazing. It's like this literary test that you apply to a script and almost no script passes it. Like, it's insane, like the tiny, tiny percentage of scripts. And the, the, the test is this. Do you have a scene in which two women are talking without any men in the room? And are they managing to talk about something other than boys? <laughs> no, this just doesn't happen. Uh, it's, it's very rare to have sort of two women talk in business or something in a script without anything else, without any romantic, what about Steve? Um, <laughs> so I am very proud that I've written a lot of scripts that pass the test, written some scripts that don't. Um, if you've got, you know, if you're writing a show, like a really military-based show, you might have it like just all guys or something. Um, any scenes that I'm particularly proud of for the women? Almost everything Anya said, I love because it was always sort of like so ungendered. Um, at least I liked writing her that way, that, that her concerns never came from. But as a girl, it was always, but as a merchant, as a demon, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever she was. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm really proud of all the Battlestar Galactica and Caprica stuff in which we really, the episodes where we really owned the fact that this was a culture that didn't have a history of gender or orientation discrimination. So people may think Rosalind's not um, fit to be president, but they're, they don't think she's fit to be president because she was secretary of education, not because she's a woman. Like that argument didn't come up. Um, people may think Starbuck isn't fit to be out there flying today, but it's because she's hopped up on stims or whatever, not because she's a woman. Like, um, there was some, such great equality on that show. When they did the, like, the bare knuckles boxing episode, it was, oh, yeah. she was in there as a contestant, just like everybody else. Love that. And so I'm particularly proud of that show and the way, the way it handled women. And I think that show uh, allowed each episode to be to sort of have its own feel, and so the, sometimes the culture of the world shifted a little bit depending on who was writing the episode. And I really love those moments where we took the opportunity to remind people of that, about that world. Excellent question. I'd like to thank everybody for all the questions today. I have one final one that I have been dying to ask you for seven years now. Everyone in this room is very familiar with everything that you've written. We're all big fans. What is Jane Espenson watching on television these days? Oh. oh, what am I watching? I know, what of them? Uh, don't I'd say, like to hear from all say, three. Maybe, there may be things I'm not proud of. Um, <laughs> I love Project Runway, <laughs> and I am proud of that. Um, I was sick recently. I was in bed for two weeks with pneumonia. You know what's great when you're lying in bed feeling bad? Put on the, li the, the Big Brother live feeds. <laughs> It's like you're in a house with a bunch of crazy people. Um, I, I, I actually find it like quite soothing. Um, <laughs> I'm watching um, the newsroom. Uh, I'm, I was watching Smash, but kind of, I don't know, semi-ironically. I love the musical numbers, and um, nah, honestly, I just loved it. Um, <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be watching Breaking Bad, but I'm kind of waiting till it's done and then I'll watch it all. <laughs> but um, yeah, I watch good. John Stewart and Stephen Colbert every night. Yeah. But uh, you know what? I feel it's best you guys find your own favorites. <laughs> That's my way of ducking the question. I don't know. I'm too busy writing. <laughs> 30 Rock, yeah. Uh, oh, and 30 Rock and Modern Family and woo. Community. <gasps> Community. Yeah, I should have started there. Thank you, Cheeks. <laughs> For 30 Rock and Community and Modern <laughs> Family. Yeah, no problem. It's okay. <laughs> well, all right. Well, we're so glad everyone was able to come and see Jane today. And 
if you guys will do it, if you guys will do our panelists a big favor, lovehusbands.com. Go home, watch all of it. Tell your friends, tell your family, spread the word. Let's keep Jane writing, and let's get her back here at Dragon Con a thousand more times.